Good morning, everyone. Uh, what a great day that the Lord has made this morning. I am so grateful to be alive. I'm so grateful that you allow us to come into your living rooms this morning. We greatly appreciate that, and we thank you for it. Amen. God is awesome, and he is great, and he is wonderful. And I don't know about you, but I just know that God is God. Amen. And, you know, I was sitting here this morning just looking out the window, just reflecting on the things that are happening in the world today. And I just want to give a big shout out to those uh, individuals out there who are risking their lives every single day just so that we can have our life safe. Amen. For the nurses and the doctors and the policemen and just for all those individuals who are out there every single day just doing their job. Amen. Uh, because uh, not because they, you know, they have to because they want to. And I just want to give them a big shout out today and just to let them know that uh, we appreciate you. If you're a doctor or you're a nurse, if you work in the hospital, uh, fireman, police officer, uh, EMTs, we appreciate you this morning. We thank you. Um, you know, it, it's crazy because you think about how so many people are dying and never in my wildest dreams that would I ever have expected this to be, but it is, um, unfortunately. But I just thank God that, you know, God is still keeping us. God is still on the throne. God is still with us. Amen. And truly God is, he's great. So I just wanted just to go over uh, some things that with you today, I, I um, just wanted just to talk to someone out there today um, in regards to uh, what's going on out there. And I, I believe I have a great word for you this morning. And I ask that you just uh, get ready as we prepare for uh, our praise and worship. Uh, just give us a couple of seconds here. We just got to get this situated. Um, so please just one moment and uh, I'll be right back with our praise and worship. Hey man, we're having some technical difficulties in regards to our praise and worship, but we're going to get that started right away um, as soon as we, we get that situated. Uh, but if anybody out there today, if you don't mind, just please just like and share this video. Amen. And just, uh, if you believe and uh, you like the words you hear, pray that you would uh, just like and share it so that we could um, get the word out. Amen. Get the word out. So I just pray that God would continually be with you uh, this morning, be with you through the rest of this week. I pray that God would continually um, just strengthen you and continually just lift you up. Amen. Because uh, we, we're, we're facing hard times today. We're facing difficult times. Uh, but thank God, thank God that for the grace and mercy of God, that God has kept us and God was with us and he never abandoned us and he never left us. I just want to just thank God for that. And truly God is wonderful and, and great. Amen. So this morning, um, I might just give you the, the text. We're going to be coming to you from the, the book of Isaiah, uh, the 25th chapter, verses four and five. We're going to continue on the series of 
uh, surviving in the storm. Amen. Surviving in the storm uh, because often the times um, uh, many people don't make it out of the storm. Amen. And uh, when you're surviving the storm, uh, in the storm, that that alone, amen, and you should give God praises right there that he has kept you thus far. Amen. He has kept you thus far. So, like I said earlier, so many people are dying, but the fact that God has kept you, that alone should give you praise. That alone should make you want to worship him. That alone should make you want to lift up your hands and give him praise before the simple fact that he has brought us thus far. He has brought us thus far. Let's pray this morning. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I want to say thank you. Thank you, Father God, for your greatness, your kindness, and your mercy. Thank you, Father God, for your greatness. And thank you, Father God, for just who you are, Father God. Thank you, because we know, Father God, that we could not have made it thus far without you. We need you every step of the way, Father God. And I just want to say thank you because of all the individuals who can hear my voice, Father God, thank you. Thank you for that. And thank you because you loved us and you cared for us. And we know we could not have made it thus far without you, Father God. And we actually, Father God, let you heal the land and heal us in our lives, Father God, and touch us, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Truly, God is great and God is awesome. Um, so let's uh, let's let's go to the word Isaiah, the twenty fifth chapter, verse four and five. Amen. Isaiah, the twenty fifth chapter, verses four and five. I'll be coming to you this morning from the GW version, which is the God's Word translation. And it simply reads this, you have been a refuge for the poor, um, a refuge for the needy in their distress. You have been a refuge for the poor, a refuge for the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rain and, a sh and shade from the heat. A tyrant's breath uh, is like a rainstorm against the a wall. Amen. Like heat in a dry land. You calm the uproar of foreigners. The song of tyrants is silence, like heat that is reduced by the shadow of a cloud. Amen. Uh, I, and if if I could this morning, I, I, I just want to uh, just leave a, a, a simple question with you this morning. And the question simply would be is, who is God to me. And that's not a question you're going to ask me, but you should ask yourself, who is God to me? Amen. Uh, that that question in, in itself uh, is enough to uh, make you wonder, who is God to me? Who is God to me? Because who God is to you is going to determine if you're going to be able uh, to make it through the storms of life. Amen. Um, so the, you, that's the question we got to ask ourselves is who is God to me? Now, the prophet Isaiah uh, in this particular chapter, chapter 25, he he begins uh, this chapter with uh, a couple of words. Here. And these words really uh, resonated in my spirit. And, 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 and what he said was he said, uh, Lord, you are my God. Chapter one. I mean, verse one. Lord, you are my God. Uh, Lord, you are my God. And I don't know about you, but something should have clicked in somebody's spirit when I just said those words. Something should have clicked in their spirit because they understood exactly what I just said. Lord, you are my God. Woo! Uh, I can feel I can feel joy read, read about there because the fact that he is my God. And I really don't have to say anything else because the fact that he is my God, that alone gives me joy. And the fact that he is your God, that alone should give you joy. Uh, I got 
peace this morning because he is my God. I know it's crazy all around you, but because God is my God, uh, I got peace this morning. I got comfort this morning. Uh, I, I, I got strength this morning for the simple fact that he is my God. And if y'all don't mind, I just want to be a little selfish this morning and tell you, my God. So the question becomes is when people are asking you who you're praying for, you just simply reply to my God. When they ask you who you're worshiping this morning, you simply just reply back to my God. When they ask you, when they ask you, uh, uh, what, 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 wh who, who's keeping you, who, who's bringing you out, the, who's making way, your response should simply be, my God. I don't know about anything else, but the one thing I do know is that my God will bring me through. Oh, my God will make a way. Uh, I, I just want to talk to somebody out there this morning who said, you know what? Uh, it's tough in my life. My life is crazy. I don't know what's going on. But one thing I know this one is that my God will bring me out. Woo! My God will bring me out. Is there anybody out there this morning? I, I want to talk to y'all this morning. Is there anybody out there this morning who can simply say, Thank God that he is my God. Mm, thank God that he is my God. Uh, I'm personalizing this thing. I'm personalizing him because he is my God. And that's the reason why I got up this morning. That's the reason why, why, why I got strength to make it from day to day to day and to deal with the truck and the trash that I got to deal with. But there's a reason why I keep on going. Because he is my God. Woo -hoo -hoo. That alone right there should give you joy this morning. I don't know if there's anybody out there of say, I got joy this morning, Pastor. I got joy for the simple fact that he is my God. Ah, uh, I can stay right there all day long. Just the fact that this women just saying that he is my God. I can stay right there all day long because he is my God. Now, may I then suggest then that verse one, when he says, Lord, you are my God, maybe may I suggest that it is a setup for verses four and five. Verse one, Lord, you are my God, is a setup for verses four and five. Watch down what he says in verse four. He says, uh, you have been a refuge for the poor. Uh, I want to stay right there. I, I, I'll read the rest a little bit. You have been uh, a refuge for the poor. Now, any time you're thinking about the poor, uh, then what you're thinking about then is uh, poor then in this particular text equals helpless. Poor equals helpless. Amen. It equals helpless. So in other words, he, when, when he said these words, he says, you have been a refuge for the poor. What he's saying is that you have been a refuge for the helpless. And when you think about helpless, what you're thinking about then is an individual who is weak, someone who is at the lowest point of your life. Uh, somebody who says, uh, maybe somebody out there this morning say, you know what, Pastor, I've been uh, uh, the weakest I've ever been in my whole life. Maybe somebody saying, well, Pastor, I'm struggling and I'm trying to make it in and now I'm feeling helpless. Oh, uh, is there anybody out there that says, I, I've been low, I've been low. Maybe somebody has treated you bad, and now you're feeling a sense of being helpless. Maybe, maybe, maybe something happened in your life. It's got you feeling helpless. Uh, uh, maybe somebody who we trusted has, has uh, betrayed us, and now we're feeling helpless. Helpless, and it's the crushing feeling. This helpless, this poorness, this helplessness, and and sometimes you just can't help yourself. 
sometimes you can't help yourself. Uh, have you ever been in a situation uh, where it was all out of control? Have you ever been in an area of your life when it was all out of control? Uh, have you ever had to sit at the side of a loved one uh, watching the very life leave them? Have you ever had to sit there and wonder and, and wish you had the power to stop them from dying, uh, but yet they died uh, any way? Uh, maybe somebody had a pink slip handed to them. Uh, Ah, and, and, and you lose your job, and it, it's at the point in your life when you needed money the most. Uh, m m maybe, m maybe uh, it's uh, a woman with children, and the man walked out on you uh, and left you all by yourself with all those kids to take care of, and you're trying to figure out how you are you going to make it. M m maybe it's that individual who trying to to do the right things, but things seem to not go the way you plan. Maybe, maybe it's that. But I want to let you know this morning that God is here for you. He's here for you. Amen. You may have been left high and dry, but God is here with you. He's here with you. Now, now, now the prophet then, he does not stop with the Helpless. Well, watch what he says. Watch what he says. He says, uh, uh, you have been a refuge for the poor, a refuge for the needy and their distress. A needy and their distress. So he doesn't just stop with the, the helpless, uh, but he also goes in with the needy. And when you think about needy, needy simply is equal to broke. It is simply broke. And anytime you are broke, brokenness will place you in a bad situation. Uh, it will place you in, in, in a spot in your life where you really don't want to go. And often at times when you deal with being broke, uh, then oftentimes it, it begins uh, on the physical side uh, before it transitions to the rest of your life. Uh, what are you saying, Pastor? What are you saying? Uh, let me let me let me let me give you a, an example. Mm, sometimes uh, uh, you you may have bills in your life. Yeah, you got bills in your life, and and you don't have enough money to, to, to cover the bills. And and uh, truthfully, uh, some of you are are uh, really thinking about it, you really broke right about now, and you're thinking to yourself, well, the stimulus check, I just got a, the stimulus check, but truth be told, I need about 10 more of those stimulus checks to, to really get me through what I'm going through right now. And somebody, I know somebody out there saying, well, maybe I, I, I need a little bit, a little bit more government, just a little bit more, uh, uh, but I need stimulus checks. And, and now you're dealing with this brokenness of, of being broke fiscally because you don't have the money to pay uh, the expenses or the bills uh, in your life. So now you're dealing with that. You're dealing with that. And, and now uh, you're, you're dealing with the physical brokenness. And, 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 and after a while, it, it transitions over to a mental brokenness. Mm -hmm. You see, physical brokenness transitions to mental Brokenness because you're uh, because at, at the while you begin to wonder and worry about how are you going to pay these bills, and now it's in your mind emotionally, uh, it's got you feeling down because of um, the physical brokenness of not having enough money. Uh, I don't know, has anybody ever been there before in your life where it seems as if uh, what's happened in the physical has now got to the mental? It's got me to the mental and, and, and it's wearing me out because it's worrying my mind this morning. I'm trying to figure out how am I going to make it. Now, you must understand then that this brokenness does not happen overnight. This brokenness happens uh, over time. It is as if, uh, with the story as the story goes, uh, the, the pebble wasn't always a pebble, but it was once a great 
rock is because of the constant dripping of the water that eventually the, the big rock eroded and now is a small pebble. And it's the same thing with us in our lives. Uh, we, we start out strong. We start out with a lot of faith. We start out with a strong mindset, but life will keep dripping and keep dripping problem at the problem at the problem in your life. And you're trying to figure out how are you going to make it? Uh, now, it's a mental brokenness that that you're dealing with. And, 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 and if you got to be careful, because if you don't take care of, of the mental brokenness, eventually it'll transition over to spiritual brokenness. And I, I want to tell you this morning, I don't care how strong you are mentally, there will be a time in your life when you find yourself in a state of brokenness. Yes, yes. There will come a time in your life when you find yourself in a state of brokenness. And it's here then that uh, we're dealing with the spiritual side now, spiritual brokenness. And then many have turned away from God because they were spiritually broke uh, because of how life was treating them. They lost their mama and now they're broken. They prayed that God would save her and keep her alive. And now they are spiritually broke broke and he turned from God because they uh, they stopped believing in him and they stopped believing that, that what God says is true. Uh, so now when you are dealing with spiritual brokenness, uh, what you are dealing with then is you're dealing with a life that has no faith. You're dealing with a life that has no hope and you are literally down and out. You're literally in need. Uh, uh, you're, you're literally in need of every part of your life on the physical, in the mental, and on the spiritual. Uh, uh, so the question becomes then is what are you going to do? Well, because this is not a nightmare on Elm Street, but this is a nightmare on my block. This is a nightmare in my house, and this is a nightmare called my life. Mm, somebody said, well, you better call Stephen King this morning because my life's got me scared because I don't know how I am going to make it. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this mess up in. I don't know how I'm going to get out of the brokenness in my life. I don't know because I'm helpless and I want to get out. I don't want to live this life, but I, I'm, I'm in a state of helplessness and I can't, no matter what I do, it's not working. Uh, so the question becomes is what am I going to do? Ah, uh, what am I going to do? And you got to understand then that the prophet gives us two groups. He gives us uh, the helplessness and he gives us the needy. Uh, he gives us the broken and he gives us the helpless. Uh, so he says two separate groups, uh, uh, with two separate problems, uh, but he gives us one answer. Woo! One answer. And, and if you know what the one answer is, uh, shout it in your house. Uh, type it in the post. Type it everywhere you go. Shout it everywhere you go. And if you know what it is, then I want to tell you, it's simply my God. My God is my strength. He says you, you, when he says you, he's talking about God. He's talking about our God, my God, your God. He says, you are my refuge. You, you've been a refuge for me in the midst of, of the times when I couldn't help myself. Uh, you became uh, my refuge. You became uh, my strength. Uh, when I was broken, you became my strength. When I was helpless, uh, you became uh, my strength. And there's anybody out there this morning, and I want to talk to you this morning, has God ever been has he ever become something that you needed? Has he ever become something that you knew would help you along the way? Ah, uh, he says, you are, you, you, you are my refuge. You became my refuge when I needed you the most. You became my refuge. So, so, not only does he say refuge for the poor, 
refuge for the needy in their distress. In their distress. Amen. Thinking about the stress here. It's agonizing you. It's, a cons it's Your distress has got you stressing over everything. It's agonizing. And you're trying to figure out what you're going to do. Because you are literally in distress right now. You are in distress. You got to understand that distress is persistent. It's not on and off. You're not dealing with the problems on and off. One day you're good, one day you're not. It's persistent. It's every single day you're dealing with this. And then you're agonizing over it. But I come to tell you and let you know that God will become your refuge. He will become your refuge. And then what he says is that refuge for the need is in a shelter from the rain. Now you must understand that when the prophet was talking about people, the people of that day, they understood harsh weathers. They understood shelter from the rain. You see, you and I, we don't have to worry about that because when it gets too cold, we can turn on the heat. When it gets too hot, we could turn on the AC. But what about those in third countries, uh, third world countries, and those who are, who are homeless, and those who don't have heat, and those who don't have air conditioning? What about those individuals who are dealing with the constant rain and dealing with the, the, the constant harsh realities of the cold and dealing with the, the heat? What about those? You see, those people will appreciate the fact that God is, they, don't, they would appreciate the refuge part of this. You see, you never know how much you need God until God is all you need. You never know how much you need God until God is all you need. Amen. So you got to understand then that he's saying in here that you have become a shelter from the rain and shade from the heat. Now, see, if you got food in the refrigerator, this wouldn't really apply. But for the individual who's trying to struggle, trying to feed somebody, this would apply. For the individual who's going through something in your life and is tearing you down, trying to keep a good face, this will apply to you. Because you're looking for shelter from the rain. You're looking for shade from the heat. You see, heavy rains, heavy, heavy rains will wash away some people's entire livelihood. And heat waves have killed certain individuals. So you're dealing with this harsh weather. You're dealing with this harsh heat. And people of the day, they, they, they will have understood that the harshness of the weather. And they would appreciate the shelter. Any shelter they can get, they would appreciate. <laughs> And I want to talk to somebody this morning who is in need of relief from the storms of your life. Maybe the storms are stripping you of everything in your life and you say, oh, I need some relief. I need some relief in my life. And the question becomes is, where are you going to go? And he says right now, Isaiah, he says, you have become a shelter from the rain and shades from the heat. Understand that rain, growing up when it used to rain, I, I used to run home as fast as I could because the rain would make it uncomfortable for me because it would make my clothes stick to me. So the rain was uncomfortable and the heat is unbearable. 
So if you're uncomfortable or if whatever you're going through you're, is unbearable, God can provide relief in both cases. Uh, he can provide relief in both cases. So when you're going through the storms of life, when you're going through the storms, uh, you got to have the mindset that God will protect me because I am, because he is uh, my God. You got to have that mindset in order for you to be able to make it through this storm uh, and this storm is simply called Corona. You, you got to have the mindset that God is my God. So the question now becomes then is, who is God to you? Is he some genie when you just come to him only when you need a request? Or is God the individual who you know got you in the midst of the storm? Is there anybody out there this morning say, you know what, God, God protects me. He protects me. And he's kept me. He has kept me in the midst of the storm. And when you think about the rain, I want to let you know that you cannot stop the rain. The only thing you can do is look for shelter. No one has the power to stop the rain. But you can still look for shelter. We can't stop what's going on right about now, but we can look for shelter. And that shelter is simply in God. He is your shelter. He is your shelter. Because when you think about the, the rain, you can't stop it. And when you think about the heat, too much heat can cause you to be weak. It makes you lightheaded. You can't think straight. And, and when you think about it, it can be life-threatening. And they advise you to find a cool area. And the only place you can find a cool area is in Jesus Christ. In, in Christ Jesus. He's the only one that can bring you through what you're going through this morning. He can bring you through it when you're going through it this morning. I'm talking about God this morning, y'all. I'm talking about God. Now watch this. He says a tyrant's breath, tyrant's breath is like a rainstorm against the wall, like heat in a dry land. You calm the uproar of the foreigners. Uh, the song of tyrants is it, it sounds like the like heat that is reduced by the shadow of a cloud. Amen. In other words, what he's saying is that no matter what people may say about you, no matter what people may do against you, no matter what may be going on in your life, no matter what it is, God will be your refuge. He will be the shade that you need when it gets too hot in your life. When the rain is falling down upon you and things are, are beginning to happen that you don't want to happen. He says God will be a shelter. He'll be a fence all around you. And is there anybody in this place said, I can tell you this morning who God is to me. He is simply my God. So in conclusion this morning, I want to take you back to the beginning of what I said when Isaiah said in the first verse, he says, Lord, you are my God. Yeah, yeah. You are my God. So the words, what I needed, you provided. And when I needed somebody in my life, you became that. You became a friend. When I was friendless, you became my mama. When mama was long gone, you became my, my, my daddy. When daddy left me all high and dry, you became uh, my physician. When I was affected with sickness, you became uh, my loner when I needed some money. You became my strength. When my strength was all gone, you became my peace when it was crazy, all craziness all around me. And is there anybody out there this morning and said, I'm so glad that God is 
my God. Yeah, I'm so glad that he is uh, my God. Because when the storms uh, rushed up against me, he became a, a wall that kept the storm from killing me. He provided shelter from the storm. So that's the reason why when the storm of Corona was all around me, God protected me and he kicked me from the storms. He provided for me in the midst of the storms. And I feel like talking to somebody this morning. I feel like talking to my grandmamas and my grandpapas this morning who said, well, when, 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 I, when I didn't have any food in the refrigerator, God still provides. When my kids didn't have any clothes, he still provided. It may not have been the best, but God kept my kids clover. And is there anybody out there this morning? Can you be like me and simply say, Lord, you are my God. And because of that, because you kept me from the storms, and you kept me when I was in need, you brought me back when I was broken, and you kept me when I could help myself. Oh, God, if that is the case, can look at what Isaiah says. He says, Lord, you are my God. But watch what he says next. He says, I will exalt you and praise your name. Is there anybody out there this morning who said for the simple fact that he is my God, I will exalt him this morning. Not my money, not my check account, not my my, my shrimp, but I'm going to exalt God this morning. I'm going to give him praises this morning for in perfect faithfulness. Uh, you have done wonderful things, uh, things planned uh, long ago. Uh, other words, what he's saying is that, God, uh, you already know what I'm going through right about now. Huh? But because of your faithfulness, uh, I already know that you will be the shade I need when life gets too hot. I already know that you will be my refuge, my shelter when, when, when the rain is falling. You'll keep me when it's uncomfortable. You'll keep me when it's unbearable. And you have become my strength. And is there anybody out there this morning? Can you say it to yourself? Can you answer the question this morning? It's who is God to me? Woo! <laughs> Can you answer that question now this morning? Of who is God to me? Who is he to you? He is simply my God. And that's the reason why I give him praise. He is my guy, and that is the reason why I lift him up. He is my guy, and that is the reason why I continually bring and lift him up and praise him and glorify him because he is my God. Is there anybody out there this morning? Listen to me this morning. You say, well, how do I make God my God? How do I make God my God? <laughs> the question is simple. The answer is simple. You simply accept him as, as your savior, Jesus Christ. All you got to do is simply tell him, say, God, forgive me my sins. Believe that Jesus Christ that was raised from the dead, that God brought him back from the dead. Ask him to come into your life and you are now officially saved. Amen. That's all you got to do to make him your God. Because like I told you last week, it's all about who you're rolling with. And if you could this morning, simply text. Yes. Join one to eight, four, five, seven, six. Amen. If you have done that, just to let us know, we, we greatly appreciate it. We want to continually be with you through this journey. We want to help you out along the way. Text yes, join one to 84576. If you want to be saved, you want somebody to explain to you in more depth, we can do that for you. Amen. But we want to be here for you. If you just want prayer, text yes, join one to 84576. 
and we'll we'll pray for you. Or if you feel like this is the place that you want to be, this is the church that I, I want to be a part of. This is a place where I can grow. You can text yes, join one, two, eight, four, five, seven, six. Amen. We want to be here for you. We want to be there with you. And we want to propel you to the next level of your life. Amen. And now, as we conclude, ask that any of us, uh, any of you out there who is able, amen, that you can just text, give to 609-795-7883. Or you can, we can utilize the cash app, which is uh, dollar sign, H-O-R-F-A-P. I just want to let everybody know that I appreciate everyone who's giving out there. Um, I pray that God would increase your increase your seed. Amen. And if you truly believe you were blessed by this word today, you believe in your spirit that this is good soil you and that um, we're going to utilize these funds for the glory of God and for his kingdom. I pray and ask that you give now. Amen. And listen, I love you guys. Amen. And pray that you love me back. Amen. And I just thank God for you. And my prayer today is that God will continue to bless you, continue to keep your minds, uh, continue to keep your, your pocketbooks, continue to keep your spirits stayed on him. And I promise you this. If you keep your spirit, your spirit, yes, your mind and your spirit, your heart on him. No matter what goes on in your life. <clears throat> He can be, he will become the answer to whatever situation you're going through in your life. So listen, be blessed and thank everyone out there for watching and God willing, catch you guys on Wednesday. Amen. And love you. Continue to pray for you and be blessed. Peace.